micro encapsulation so the points which we are going to discuss under this point topic are introduction advantages disadvantages micro encapsulation techniques and phase separation conservation micro encapsulation the name indicates that micro encapsulation means we are encapsulating something means we have to encapsulate our drug with some material so the definition of micro encapsulation is a of liquid or solid material are surrounded or coated with a continuous film of polymeric material so we can see that it is a process by which very tiny droplets or particles of liquid or solid here our drug is in the form of either liquid or solid and then it is surrounded or coated with a continuous film of polymeric material so we have to coat this liquid or solid drug with the help of polymeric material and the product which is obtained from this process is called as micro capsules so we can see that in this micro encapsulation two components are very important first is core material so here we know uh, by the definition we came to know that micro capsules contains two important components one is a core material and other is a coat or wall or shell material okay. whenever micro capsules are formed they will look like this so inside material is called as a core material which is made up of from either liquid or solid and this core material we have to coat with the polymeric material which is also called as a coat or wall or shell material so these are the four micro capsules which contain core material and this one is a coating material hmm. now advantages of micro encapsulation so we know that from many years we are using conventional dosage form but these conventional dosage forms are having some disadvantages so that's why there is need to make some advancement in conventional dosage form so that we are preparing micro capsules so the advantages of the micro capsules are first is to increase the bioavailability so we know that conventional dosage forms are having less bioavailability means whatever drug we are taking through the dosage form that total amount of drug cannot reaches to the systemic circulation ultimately it will affect on the therapeutic activity of the drug but when we form or when we convert that conventional dosage form in micro encapsulation we can see that there is a increased bioavailability so this is very important advantage of the micro encapsulation over conventional dosage form second one to alter the drug release and separation of reactive core from other material so here we can see that when we are preparing the micro capsules so in conventional dosage form we cannot make a control over drug release but when we are preparing them in a, in the form of micro capsules we can alter the drug release also there is a separation of reactive core from other material third to improve the patient compliance so we know that the main disadvantage of the conventional dosage form is patient compliance because we have to take those dosage form thrice in a day but when we are converting this dosage form into a micro capsules patient compliance is increased means we can take the dosage form once in a day next to produce targeted drug delivery so that in micro capsule it is made up of from two important components one is a core material and other is a coating material so in coating material we are using polymers so we can use the polymers which can target the next is to reduce the reactivity of the core in relation to the outside environment so here coated with the polymeric material so it doesn't come in contact with the outside environment so that's why it our drug reactivity of the drug now to reduce the reactivity of the core in relation to the outside environment so here we know that our core material is coated with the coating material so it doesn't comes in contact with the outside environment next to decrease the evaporation rate of volatile core material so we know that some of our drugs are volatile in nature in conventional dosage form if we prepare 
prepare these drugs, then the drug is get volatilized. But when we convert them into a material capsulation form, so whatever coating material we are using, so our drug remains safe. It doesn't volatile and it shows its effect. So we can decrease the evaporation rate of the volatile form material. To convert to convert liquid to solid form and to mask the pore test. So as we know that pore material is either in the form of liquid or solid and as we are coating them with the polymeric material so we can convert liquid into a solid also. So here to convert the liquid to the solid form and to mask the pore test. So as our core material is coated with the coating material so it doesn't come in contact with our test buds so that test of that core material which may be bitter it can be masked. Next is to protect the GIT from irritant effect of drug. So in conventional dosage form whenever we administer drug it reacts with the GIT and may show irritant effect to the GIT mucosa but here again in microencapsulation as our drug is coated with the polymeric material so it doesn't come in direct contact with the GIT mucosa so its irritant effect is get retarded. Next is prevent the oxidative degradation of drug. So as we know that some of the drugs are having oxidative property. So whatever drug we are using though that drug is oxidative but our drug is coated with the polymeric material so oxidation is get prevented. So these are some advantages of the microencapsulation. With these advantages, these microcapsules have some disadvantages also. So let's discuss the disadvantages of microencapsulation. Disadvantages are it, it is a costly process and it is not economical. So we know that as it is an advanced drug delivery system, so to make such type of dosage form, we need some uh, costly machinery to make the micro. Micro 
So this is a cross section of the four micro capsules. So we can see that this is a coating material which is made up of from the polymer and this inside is called as a drug. So one example is here. It is uh, this particular drug is coated with the calcium alginate polymer having 450 to 1100 micrometers in size. Next point is microencapsulation techniques. Now up till now we discuss about what is a microencapsulation, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the microencapsulation, and when we form the microcapsules, how it looks. Now how we can prepare the microcapsules. So there are different techniques which we can use in industry for making the microcapsules of different size ranges. So here we can see that the methods which we are using are air suspension technique, co-observation phase separation process, spray drying and spray congealing, multi-orifice centrifugation process, pan coating, solvent evaporation, interfacial polymerization, extrusion, single and double immersion techniques, supercritical fluid anti-solvent method, nozzle vibration technology. So these are the different techniques which we are using for making the microcapsules of different size ranges. So if we are using these processes, we can formulate the microcapsules of these size ranges. Now we will discuss the important method of microencapsulation that is co-observation and phase separation. So this is very important technique by which we can prepare the microcapsules and this process, in this process there are three important steps. So we can see here in this diagram, here these are the droplets and this is a homogeneous polymeric solution. Means this is our vehicle in which we have already dissolved our polymer and these, these are the droplets. After phase separation, what happens? Whatever polymer we have dissolved in this vehicle, they get precipitated out and they form a coat around our core material. So here you can see that whatever Polymer is present in vehicle. It get form, it form, it gets separate out here, and it forms a loose bound around our core material. And finally, there is a rigidization of the coating material around core material. So the, these are the three important steps. First is the formation of three immiscible phases. So we can see here there are formation of three immiscible phases. One is a coating material, one is a core material and other is a vehicle which we are using. Next process is deposition of coating. So after phase separation what happens? Whatever coating material we have used, it gets precipitated out and it forms a coat around our core material. And last step is rigidization of coating. So by some methods we have to rigidize the co coating material around core material. So these are the three important steps of the phase separation and co-observation. And there are some different methods of phase separation and co-observation method. Means how we can separate out this coating material around core material. So the methods are separation of coating material around core material can be obtained by these five methods. First is change in temperature. Next is addition of incompatible polymer, addition of salt, addition of non-solvent and polymer-polymer interaction. So these are the methods by which we can separate coating material around the core material. So the first method is temperature change method. So how by temperature change we can precipitate out the coating material around core material that we will discuss. So this is the method, temperature change method. Change in temperature causes separation of coating material from the solvent. This is very important. By changing the temperature, we are separating coating material from the solvent. Next, it is useful when the solubility of the material depends upon the temperature. Now here we will discuss one, of, one example. As we know that in micro capsule, two important components we have. One is a core material and other is a coating material. So 
So in this method, which coating material we are using and which core material we are using and which vehicle we are using that we will discuss. And how by changing in temperature we can prepare the microcapsules. So let's discuss this. The method is first disperse two percent wet bar volume, wet bar volume ethyl cellulose in cyclohexane. So we can see this is a core material, N-acetyl thioramphenol, which is called as a paracetamol. Now we have to coat this paracetamol by coating material. Which coating material we are using here? That is ethyl cellulose, and the solvent which we are using here is cyclohexane. So the process is disperse two percent wet bar on ethyl cellulose in cyclohexane. Next, heat the mixture to boiling point to form a homogeneous polymer solution. Add core material with stirring. Cool the mixture in room temperature with stirring and filter. Then we will get the microcapsule. Now, what happens here? The property of the ethyl cellulose in cyclohexane is very important. Now, what is the property of ethyl cellulose in cyclohexane? So here we have to take one beaker. In that first we have to take cyclohexane, which is our solvent, which is our vehicle. In that we have to add ethyl cellulose, which is acting as a coating material. Now, what is the property of this ethyl cellulose in cyclohexane? So at room temperature, that ethyl cellulose it is not soluble in cyclohexane. So what we have to do? We have to increase the temperature of the beak temperature to the boiling point. So what happens? That ethyl cellulose is get solubilized into the cyclohexane. The next step is that after getting homogeneous solution of cyclohexane and ethyl cellulose, we have to add our core material. And the core material here we are using is N-acetyl paraminophenol that is paracetamol. So after adding core material into a homogeneous solution of polymer, we have to decrease the solution. We have to decrease the temperature to the room temperature. So what will happen? As the temperature increases, the ethyl cellulose in cyclohexane will get precipitated out, and it is get separated from the phase, and it forms a coat around our core material. Our core material is paracetamol, and ultimately it will form a coat around paracetamol. Finally, we have to filter that solution, and then we will get the microcapsules. Now these microcapsules are paracetamol coated with the ethyl cellulose. This is the temperature change method. That is incompatible polymer addition. Now this method is also used for making the microcapsules. So here we are adding incompatible polymer. So that's why there will be a phase separation process. The polymer which is chemically not compatible will be added to the coating solution. So already we know that in micro encapsulation, in micro encapsulation, we know the three important components are there. One is a vehicle, one is a core material, and other is a coating material. Now, how we can separate out our coating material around core material? So by incompatible polymer addition. Now, what happens actually? So the procedure is we can see whatever second polymer we are adding, that second polymer should be chemically not compatible. It is added to the coating solution. The polymer which is to be added should have following properties. That means it should have more affinity towards solvent. So whatever vehicle we are using and whatever second polymer we are adding, affinity should be there in between. No interaction with the core material. Whatever second polymer we are adding, it should have no any no interaction with the core material, and it should be incompatible with the coating material. Means whatever second polymer we are adding here, it should be incompatible with the first polymer. So we can see here. Example is addition of liquid polyurethane, which is a incompatible polymer. To ethyl cellulose solution in toluene, and our core material is methylene blue and methylene blue hydrochloride. So, core material is methylene blue hydrochloride, which we have to coat with the ethyl cellulose. And solution vehicle we are using here is toluene, and second incompatible polymer we are using is a liquid polyurethane. Now, how by how by this process? Microcapsules are formed that we 
and then discuss. The procedure is this. First step is dissolve ethyl cellulose in toluene to produce 2% made by volume solution. So here ethyl cellulose is our coating material and toluene is a vehicle. So we have to dissolve ethyl cellulose in toluene to produce 2% made by volume solution. Then we have to add methylene blue which is our core material. So continuous turning is very really important here. The next step is slowly add liquid polybutadiene. Now liquid polybutadiene is an incompatible polymer which is having more affinity towards toluene and which is incompatible with the ethyl cellulose. So what will happen? Ethyl, ethyl cellulose from the toluene will get replaced out and liquid polybutadiene will take a place of ethyl cellulose. So ultimately ethyl cellulose will get precipitated out and it will form a coat around our core material. The core material here we have used is methylene blue hydrochloride and it is successfully get coated with the ethyl cellulose. Finally, we can solidify that and then by simply filtration, after filtration we will get a solid microcapsules of methylene blue hydrochloride coated with the ethyl cellulose. So this is the method. The next method is Yeah. 